Travis Brown had the potential to become a great. The 6'7 Hawaiian European fighter with a reach of 79 inches began MMA at the age of 26 and quickly rose up the UFC heavyweight rankings. And that was due to his natural size, strength, speed, athleticism and heart which not only earned him some major victories but has also gotten him into some of the most exciting fights in the division. Yet nowadays he's known more for being the husband of former UFC female bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey and is remembered in MMA for his career ending run that saw him lose four fights in a row. So how good was Travis Brown actually? Hey guys it's Keon and today we're going to be talking about Travis Hoppa Brown. This is a video I wanted to do for a while because he was one of my favorites back in the day and honestly I had high hopes for him to become a UFC champion but that obviously didn't play out like I thought it would. Regardless win or lose most of his fights were very exciting so in this video we're going to take a look at his MMA career to really understand how good he was. But before we get to it as always shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video but even the interim members get early access to my videos and video to the Keon Kamara podcast which you could also listen to for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and SoundCloud. Plus every month the money goes to charity so please join all the info will be down below. Now let's get to it. Travis began his MMA career on February 7th 2009 at the age of 26. The 6'7 Hawaiian native was a basketball player prior to being introduced to Brazilian jiu-jitsu and boxing at the age of 26. Yes Travis immediately went pro with only a couple of months of fight experience but in 2009 he went 7-0 and that seventh victory was against Brian Campbell who he knocked out in 10 seconds with a head kick. This momentum continued into the beginning of 2010 when Travis fought Abe Wagner for the BFC heavyweight championship. Once again it took him 10 seconds to finish the fight, this time with a barrage of punches. Then 16 days later he fought Aaron Bink for the interim gladiator challenge heavyweight championship. Travis immediately shot for the takedown and once he got a good grip he lifted Aaron into the air before slamming him to the mat. I thought Aaron was out from the slam but Travis proceeded to throw a bunch of punches before the ref finally stopped the fight. This 9-0 record led to him signing with the UFC in March of 2010 where he fought James McSweeney in his debut. After dropping James with a left hand, Travis finished the fight before the end of the first round with ground and pound. At UFC 120 he fought Czech Congo. The two went back and forth for three rounds with Travis winning the first. Czech won the second and that momentum continued into the third but repeated short grabs from Czech caused a point deduction and after 15 minutes the fight was ruled as a draw. Seven months later Travis fought Stefan Struve. Now this performance put Travis on the map as he finished Stefan in the first round with the Superman punch. That momentum continued into his next fight against Rob Ruffton at UFC 135. Although he didn't get the finish, Travis was dominant on the feet and on the ground. After three rounds, he won by unanimous decision. After this victory, Travis fought Chad Griggs. He connected with knees, secured a takedown, and finished Chad off with an arm triangle choke. The fight lasted less than three minutes. On October 5th, 2012, Travis headlined his first UFC card against Antonio Bigfoot Silva. He was a favorite going into the fight, and it looked so early as he came forward aggressively with punches and kicks. But one of those kicks caused a strain on Travis's left hamstring. He was in clear discomfort whenever he'd put pressure on it. So Bigfoot took advantage by pressing forward and connecting with a big overhand right. Travis went down and ate more punches before Herb Dean stepped in, handing him his first pro loss. Travis came back six months later to fight Gabriel Gonzaga. It took him 71 seconds to finish the fight with elbows to the head of Gonzaga who was trying to bring the fight down. This one came with controversy as Travis grabbed the fence on a takedown attempt and he landed those fight ending elbows to the back of Gonzaga's head. Regardless he went on to fight former Strikeforce heavyweight champion Alistair Overeem. Travis got hurt early with a knee to the body that dropped him. This was followed by a barrage of punches and more knees from Overeem. But luckily Mario Yamasaki was the ref. So Travis was given the opportunity to overcome the adversity. And that's what he did as before the end of the first he landed a front kick that dropped Overeem. This was followed with a couple of hammer fists before Mario stepped in. At UFC 168 Travis fought former UFC heavyweight champion Josh Barnett. The two opened up the fight trading shots. Then Travis connected with a big knee that forced a desperation takedown from Josh. And much similar to the Gonzaga finish Travis connected with a bunch of elbows to Josh's head that knocked him out cold. This three fight win streak led to a title eliminator bout with Fabricio Verdun. Travis was actually the favorite to win as on paper he was the better striker and he looked moments away from winning the fight in the opening minute by connecting with a right hand followed by ground and pound but Verdun survived and secured the takedown which was the first time Travis got taken down in his UFC career. Eventually they got back up and the two stood toe to toe throwing strikes and although Travis had his moments it was Verdun who was surprisingly finding more success. In fact his striking improved so much for this fight that it even caught the fans off guard. He pressed forward with combos and mixed out with takedowns and jiu-jitsu. By the end of round 2, Travis was visibly tired which meant the domination from Verdum continued throughout the fight. I do have to give him credit for surviving all 5 rounds though. But in the end, Fabricio Verdum won by unanimous decision. Afterwards, Travis stated that he broke his hand, ribs and even dislocated his foot during the fight. Regardless, this one-sided defeat made Travis leave his longtime training team, Jackson Wink MMA. He joined Glendale Fight Club, home of UFC female bantamweight champion, Ronda Rousey, which meant Edmund Tarverdian was his new head coach. Travis's first fight with his new team was against Brandon
friend and Shaab. Shaab's game plan was to bring the fight down, but that was easily denied by Travis. On the final attempt, Brandon got caught by an uppercut. Travis got a hold of his back and rained on the punches before Mario Yamasaki stepped in. There was a lot of animosity before and after this fight was done, and I could only assume the reason was because of Ronda Rousey, who Brandon dated previously. Because after this victory in 2015, Travis and Ronda went public with their relationship. But before that announcement, Travis fought former UFC heavyweight champion and former teammate Andre Arlovsky. The two opened up the fight by feeling each other out on the feet. Then Travis rushed in and got countered by a right hand. Arlovsky pressured forward and threw a barrage of punches before getting pushed off. But Travis was still on defense mode as he ate more shots to the head and body. Arlovsky was looking to connect with a big right hand, but since he was unable to land it, he switched to a back fist right after which rocked Travis. Arlovsky pressed forward with more punches, and Travis looked like he was on ice skates. He tried to shake off the cobwebs and proceeded to attack with some jabs and leg kicks. But once again, Arlovsky missed the overhand right, which followed with a back fist and another right. Travis went down and although he got back up, he was even more wobbly than before. Arlovsky smelled blood and went all out for the finish. But then Travis connected with a right hand that dropped him. I was screaming at this point when I was watching it live. It was wild. But Arlovsky was okay and connected with a big knee on the way up. He was more patient when picking his shots this time. And eventually he landed an uppercut followed by two more right hands that forced the ref to step in. This was one of my favorite fights ever. And what I found even more impressive was how Travis didn't even go down at the end. He truly showed so much heart in this defeat. Following this fight though, Travis's job was on the line after his ex-wife came forward with accusations of domestic violence. But since the investigation found inconclusive evidence, he was reinstated to fight by the UFC. Travis came back 8 months later to fight Matt Mitrione. Mitrione came out aggressive on the feed and even dropped Travis for a moment. But the momentum changed big time with a couple of eye pokes to Mitrione's right eye. From there, Travis took over both on the feet and on the ground. He connected with a big right hand to Mitrione's eye in the third and it swelled up like a balloon. Travis secured another takedown and threw ground and pound before the ref stepped in. At UFC 200, Travis fought former UFC heavyweight champion, Kane Velasquez. Kane came out aggressive by pressing forward and throwing strikes. And in the clinch, Travis ate more shots. Kane displayed some amazing striking in this fight, and that included a big right hand that dropped Travis. Kane began to rain down the ground and pound. After some time, Travis got back up to his feet, but the constant pressure from Kane made him visibly tired in the final minute. Travis got taken down once again and ate more punches before Big John stepped in with 3 seconds left in the round. Two months later, he fought former UFC heavyweight champion, Fabricio Verdum, making it their second meeting. Verdum came out immediately with a flying kick to Travis's face. It was an awesome way to start a fight, and it really set the tone as Verdum was dominant on the feet and in the clinch. And although he wasn't able to secure a takedown, he knocked Travis down to the ground where he threw punches and attempted a rear naked choke. Much like their first matchup, it was all Verdum, and after 15 minutes, he won by unanimous decision. But before it was made official, Fabricio and Travis's coach, Edmund Tarverdian, almost got into a scuffle due to Edmund's trash talk. Verdum threw a front kick and Travis squared up, ready to go for round 4. It was hilarious. After this defeat, Travis fought Derek Lewis. Prior to this bout, he left Glendale Fight Club and joined Black House Gym. Travis looked good early by connecting with kicks to the body, but then Derek landed a right hand that knocked him down for a moment. Travis recovered and threw a hard knee to the body that had Derek hurt, but he recovered and the two continued to trade until the end of the round. All these shots had bad intentions behind them, and that continued early in the second. Travis was pressing forward and connecting with more kicks, but then he rushed in and got caught by a left hand that rocked him. Derek went all out and the fight looked moments away from being over. Travis attempted to bring the fight down, but that led to him being mounted immediately. Derek began raining down the punches, but eventually the two got back up to their feet. Both men swung with a big right hand, but it was Derek's that connected. Travis fell to the ground, and unfortunately for him, Mario Yamasaki was the ref, which meant Derek threw ground and pound until he was out. At UFC 213, Travis fought Alexi Olenek. Although Travis looked moments away from finishing the fight early in round 1 by connecting with a left hand, Olenek survived and landed a right hand that knocked him down. He tried to lock up a rear naked choke, but Travis got saved by the bell. In round 2, Travis secured the takedown, but Olenek ended up getting a hold of his back where he finally locked in the rear naked choke. After losing 4 fights in a row, UFC President Dana White said Travis should retire. And since then, he hasn't fought, even outside of the UFC. Of course, he made headlines during Ronda's run in the WWE, most notably for saving Bret Hart from a fan who tackled him. So after going 18-7-1 in MMA, how good was Travis Brown actually? Honestly, I think it's a shame that he's remembered as Ronda Rousey's husband and his career downfall. Because at one point, he was one of my favorite up-and-coming fighters. Fighters. First off, considering that he had no experience in any martial art until the age of 26 is insane. But what's even crazier is that he made his debut months after finally learning. And that's because Travis was naturally gifted with his height and reach, which he used to his advantage by attacking from a distance. And early on, when the action went to the ground, he was a threat with submissions, which is something I wish he worked on more. Imagine if Ronda helped him perfect the armbar. I could have definitely seen his career go on for longer had he adapted from a striker to a grappler. Plus, he had some really good takedown defense. But in the end of the day, he started very very late in his career. And
and for him to become a top five heavyweight in the UFC is very impressive, which makes me believe he could have done so much more had he started earlier. But the best thing Travis had going for him was his heart. The amount of times this guy was on wobbly legs and still continued to fight through it was awesome to watch. I mean, that loss to Andre Arlovsky was, in my opinion, one of his most impressive showings. And I'm sure many fighters wish they could say that after a loss. But of course, once the losses piled up, many began to wonder what happened to his promising career. Now, the biggest thing people will point to was his move from Jackson Wink MMA to Glendale Fight Club. And as much as I believe that was a factor, I don't think it was the only one. Because even when Travis left Glendale Fight Club, he was still losing. After years of taking damage in his fights and being able to recover and find the win, he was unable to do so later into his career as he got older. But the biggest reason for me was that Travis fell in love with Ronda Rousey and fell out of love with MMA. Now, I'm not trying to put the blame on Ronda, but more so on life in general as it could easily change a person's mindset. Travis had his eye on MMA gold, but after meeting Ronda, he had all the gold he needed. That's why I would give his MMA career an 8 out of 10. And I know you're probably thinking, that's quite high. But like I said, he was one of my favorites as he truly had the potential to become one of the best. Yet sometimes, life's plans don't go according to how we want them. But after seeing so many videos of him and Ronda while making this, I think Travis Brown is happy with how everything turned out. My name is Keon and this is my take on Travis Hoppa Brown. You agree, disagree, or have something else to add? please put in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all out for now, so I'll see you in my next one.